infusionselfhealing.com and in this video I'm going to be looking at how step by step I'm improving my vision in the dark. Now the importance of that for me is that I have a condition called retinitis pigmentosa and that actually affects the rod cells, the peripheral cells in my vision. Now these cells are also responsible for low level lighting so if you're out at night time or in any sort of dark environment those cells actually pick up low level lighting, they actually become active on about one photon of light. Now with my condition uh, that's that much more difficult to do so what I'm trying to do is work these exercises and really try and wake up my night vision and my peripheral vision at the same time. So this was really highlighted to me this weekend when I went to one of my favourite Indian restaurants downtown here in San Francisco and it's a pretty dark restaurant and we went in and um, just as force of habit we asked for the, the best lit table just because that's what you know we normally do every time we go to a restaurant. Now we sat at the, the best lit table and I could you know the light was coming down on me and I could see in front of me fine but I actually found a strain in my eyes. It was like there was a conflict between my pupils wanting to constrict and to dilate and this is because the constriction comes from the light and the dilation comes from wanting to let in more light. I also found that I just didn't feel relaxed or comfortable. It was like uh, my eyes were trying to take in as much light as possible, but it was being inhibited by this bright light in front of me. So for the first time, and much to our waitress's dismay, uh, we actually asked to move again and moved to somewhere that was uh, darker in the restaurant. As soon as I sat down in this darker part of the restaurant, I actually felt my eyes relaxed and they could start doing the job that they're supposed to do, which is to try and take in uh, as much light in its surroundings as possible. Now, as you can imagine, I was very pleased about this and hence this video uh, right now, I wanted to share this with you guys. And uh, about halfway through my onion bhaji, I was trying to think, you know, what are the sort of things that I've really been doing that's, uh, that's got me to this point, that really got me um, feeling more confident in the dark and actually being able to see better at a lower lit table. So I've identified about four areas that I've been working on. The first area was actually just adjusting to the dark. The second area was to exercise, try and do exercise in the dark to actually strengthen those rod cells. The third one was just to strengthen the pupils in my eye, which actually, you know, responsible for taking in as much light as possible. And the fourth one is confidence. The first point then, spending time and adjusting your eyes to the dark as much as possible. The importance of this is if you think about it, we very rarely spend time in the dark. We get up in the morning, lights come straight on, we head out to work and if you're inside an office, then uh, you've got those horrible halogen lights blaring down at your eyes. You would then come home, switch on the lights, TV lights, reading a book lights. Very rarely do we spend time just being in the dark. Now that's a bit understandable because I think you might be seen as strange if you just sit around in the dark and I think certainly your friends would have something to say about that. But if you think about it, we very rarely activate those rod cells that are responsible for seeing in the dark. So it's amazing then that we're surprised when we go into a dark environment and we find that it's difficult to see when we're not actually utilizing those cells. So one thing you can do to work around this instead of just sitting around in the dark and uh, hoping for the rods to strengthen and to, and to wake up is to just try and change your habits a little bit. Say during the night if you get up to go to the bathroom or go for a glass of water, instead of switching the lights straight on, maybe try and uh, leave them off, you know, if it's safe to do so. And uh, also when you go in and you're searching for things in the room, like you're looking for your car keys, instead of just switching the lights straight on, try and just uh, take some time to allow the eyes to adjust. You know, it's, it would only take a few seconds and just try and find the keys or anything that you're looking for. Again, um, a great thing to do is things like going for a night walk. If it's safe enough in your neighbourhood, then you can just uh, head out in the evening. And in particular in the summer is a lovely time to do this, nice time of year. But even in the winter, just going out and allowing those rods to actually adapt to the dark 
and keeping them active. Now I know a lot of people and a lot of my clients that say that they progressively find it more difficult to drive in the dark. Now uh, one of these things is just that simple fact that we're not spending enough time in the dark so it's difficult for us to function in that environment. Now for myself and anybody with uh, night blindness or retinitis pigmentosa or any low le level vision conditions, this is that much more important. Because if you think about it, if you don't use the cells, then eventually you're gonna lose the cells. So it's that much more important that we try and work with them as much as possible, keep them active, which, you know, growing up uh, was something I always avoided. And I know a lot of people with RP to avoid, because why would you wanna spend time in the dark where it's actually difficult to see? You know, it makes more sense that we'd wanna be in the light all the time. Um, but in fact, you wanna try and do the opposite and really try and wake those cells up and get them working. The second area that I've really been working at in order to improve my vision in the dark is by strengthening those cells for seeing in the dark, the rod cells. Now this is being done by spending time in the dark, um, but you can go one step further and actually try and stimulate the rod cells whilst being in the dark. Now you can check out uh, our peripheral vision exercise at envisionselfhealing.com for a lot more details on this. I'm just going to go through it briefly um, as a few points. But what you're trying to do is you're waving lights to the side of your head whilst being in the dark. Now, we prefer flashing lights because it's actually doing that on-off effect, which is what the rod cells respond to. And in fact, they respond to movement as well. So by moving the lights in the periphery, having them flash in, and being in the dark with a low level light is actually gonna help wake up those rod cells that much more and it's gonna help strengthen them. And it's also gonna help reconnect the brain to those cells and allow you to function a lot better in that environment because you're a lot more used to it. The third area then is strengthening the pupil. Now the importance of this is that you actually need the pupil to dilate fully in order to take in as much light as possible. And again, you can see if we're not spending any time in the dark and we're avoiding it, then the pupil is always going to be constricted, which is what it does in light area. And it also allows you to focus a little bit more on specific objects. So if you're always in the light, then these pupils, the muscles in the pupils are always going to be constricted. So by spending more time in the dark, you're actually allowing it to fully dilate and you're allowing those muscles to work that actually try to dilate the pupil. Now, there's specific ways that you can do this. One, again, is to do the peripheral vision exercise because um, you're actually trying to take in more of your surroundings and that allows the pupil to dilate. Another one is to do the, uh, the previous exercises of being in the dark and stimulating the rod cells because again, the pupil is dilating to try and take in that extra light. But you can also do the opposite, just like you would uh, in the gym if you were to try and train any muscle. Um, you want to be doing both um, areas. You know, you wouldn't just do a bicep curl where you would just um, flex the arm. You'd also extend the arm. So by doing the eye exercise sunning, you're actually helping to constrict the pupil as much as possible, working those constrictor muscles and strengthen it in the part of the eye. Now this means that you're working both muscles and you're bringing strength to the pupil so that when you need to either constrict or dilate in either environment, whether you're in darkness or in sunlight, then it means that it's that much easier for you to, for you to do and your eye can function that much better. The fourth and final area which uh, I've been looking at that really sort of helped me to uh, adjust in the restaurant and some might say it's probably the more important one is my confidence level. The fact that I actually felt confident enough to say, do you know what? I don't need to sit in this well-lit area. I'm gonna go sit in the darker part of the restaurant and be comfortable with that. And the reason why that this was you know, able to be achieved, as you could probably tell with through the other steps, is just spending that time in the dark and building my confidence and being able to function in that environment instead of avoiding it all the time and always only being in light environments 
help me to uh, adapt that much more confidently and to know that I can actually function in that low level uh, area. Now some of you that might just be starting out with these eye exercises uh, or has anything like retinitis pigmentosa or any low light condition, you could try doing these exercises before you even leave, before you go out to a dark environment and you'll find that it will actually wake up those rod cells and it will help improve your periphery and um, actually being out in the dark before you even go into that environment in the first place. Again, we're really looking to just build our confidence in these environments and not be fearful of, uh, of you know, being around what's weak in us. We always want to try and work what's weak and then what's strong, we want to try and maintain and always rest. So there we are then, four main areas that I've been looking at to improve my vision in the dark. The first was to adapt to the dark environment just by spending time in the dark to allow those cells to wake up. The second is to actually strengthen the rod cells responsible for seeing in the dark by using an external stimulus. The third was to strengthen the pupil which is actually responsible for dilating and allowing in as much light as possible. And the fourth and final one, the one that was most important for me, was to build my confidence. Um, you can imagine over years of being um, somewhat fearful of being in dark restaurants, it's so nice to be able to be in a restaurant, relax, feel comfortable in that dark environment and um, you know, have my focus on my meal instead of worrying about knocking things over or bumping into people. Now if you enjoyed this video and you want to find uh, a few more, you can uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube or you can head over to our website envisionselfhealing.com forward slash blogs and you will find uh, a lot more videos like this on how you can improve your vision and how uh, my actual personal process as far as vision improvement is concerned is going. And you can also follow me on Twitter at William Fuller EN or you can uh, look me up on Facebook, William Fuller in Vision, and uh, you can also check out our fan page, uh, Envision Self Healing, and uh, like our page, and uh, it's always great to get some feedback from you guys on how uh, you're enjoying these videos, and of course, if any of you have any conditions or anything that you want to work on yourselves, then uh, look us up and give us a shout. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and happy healing.